about 16 years ago in 2009, I graduated from a non-CS degree back in Pakistan. And 12 years later, in 2021, I landed a job as a senior data scientist at Meta. In this video, I'm going to explain the three-step framework which I used to make this transition with the hope that if one day you also want to land a job at one of the fan companies, then you can also use this exact blueprint to get your dream job. So let's now talk about what was the three-phase system which I used. And I can explain this exact framework in a single drawing. It started with the foundation step of taking an inventory of whatever I already knew, whatever I've already learned, and how I can use it to get into data science. So this is the step of building a foundation. The second step after that is making a pivot. So that is how I actually landed my first data science job. And then the last step is taking a leap of actually getting a job from one of the biggest tech companies in the world. So let's start with phase one, building a foundation. Even if you do not have a CS degree, even if you're coming from non-technical background, always know that there is something you have learned in your life which can help you land a job as a data scientist. In the beginning, we are not aiming at getting a job at a fan company. We just want to get a job at some company as a data scientist so that we could come in the right lane first before we start aiming for bigger companies. So identify what is your unfair advantage which you can use to get your first job as a data scientist. Even if you're coming from a teaching background, even if you're coming from non-technical background, even if you're coming from retail background, even if you're coming from accounting background, doesn't matter. In every industry, there are some commonalities with the field of data science. You just have to think hard about it and then see that how you can leverage that prior learning as your unfair advantage. Since I was doing telecommunication engineering and I had luckily taken some courses in programming, so having an engineering mindset was a big advantage for me. And before getting my first job as a data scientist, I started working as a software engineer. So I started learning SQL, I started learning Python, I started learning Git, and a lot of other stuff, which we still use in the field of data science. And I had developed soft skills, I had developed some sort of presentation skills, good communication skills, storytelling skills, project management skills, stakeholder management skills, all the skills I had learned. So the very first step is to understand that you are never starting from zero, even if you think so. So you have to make a stock of what are all the skills you have learned in the past, which are related to the field of data science, so that when you are building your resume, you can highlight some of those key achievements. Because when hiring managers and recruiters are scanning those resumes, your resume has a chance of standing up. And also know that this field of data science, it is a booming field, which means that it has capacity to absorb a lot of people who are coming from other industries. The people who are currently working in the field of data science are not sufficient to meet the demands of the job market, which means that the people who can come from outside can bridge that gap. And if you are willing to put in the work, you can be among those people who come from outside and become part of data science stream as I did. So this is your step of foundation where you basically write down what are all the skill sets. It could be hard skills, it could be soft skills. What are all the skills which can help you succeed as a data scientist? And then in the next phase, we are going to use these skills to help land our first data science job. And that is the phase of the pivot. It is a phase of pivot because in this phase, you would be pivoting from what you had previously been doing. In my case, it was full stack software engineering into the field of data science. So in the first phase, we analyze what are all the things which can help you succeed as a data scientist. In this step, we are going to learn much more, but our learning would be very laser targeted. We would be very clear in what kind of job we want to land. And then we'll build our portfolio project, our skill set around that target profile. And for that, I want you to keep in mind this T-shaped skill set. So in the T-shaped skill set, you have a very long horizontal bar. So this is what you know a little bit about everything. And then you pick one thing around which you develop very deep specialized knowledge. And this is where your prior knowledge can really help you. For example, if you have been working in healthcare domain as a data scientist, as a data analyst, or as a software engineer, even in some non-technical role, since 
you know the terminology since you know what kind of data they deal with since you know what are the business problems that is a big advantage and by leveraging that advantage you can go really deep in that one speciality and build your portfolio projects around it learn all the more technical stuff around that deep area where you want to develop your expertise so build some really good portfolio projects around that go very deep instead of dealing with toy data sets or kaggle see what is the problem you want to solve in that area of expertise and then really build a portfolio project which is very impressive and then you start targeting non fang companies first because your odds of landing your first data science job in a fang company is very slim so it's better that you start focusing on companies which are non fang ideally some smaller companies so that you would get your foot in the door and you could land your first job as a data scientist since you already have some expertise around which you have built your t shaped expertise if you find some small startup or some other company which have a demand for this deep expertise which you have developed then there is a really good chance that you would be able to get your first job as a data scientist in that field and once you land the job then focus on this impact flywheel what is this impact flywheel well you start with some insight and then you take some action around it from that action you will get some results which you would measure and from those measurements you will learn something new and from those learning you will get some more insight for example if you are working on some customer data and you have this insight that customers who take certain kind of actions their churn is 50% less than other customers so that is your first insight based on that you will take some action for example you say okay let us send some emails to other customers to take that same action so that their chances of churn also go down so that is the action you have taken then based on that you will get some results which you would measure for example what is the churn now with the new people who you have sent those emails so what is the open rate there are a lot of things which you can measure around that and based on that you will get some learning and from there you will get some more insights and the cycle keeps going on and on again see that i'm not focusing on that the moment you get a job you start building some sophisticated machine learning pipelines and use xt boost instead of this these are all logistical details which nobody cares and in today's age even ai can write where you can shine is that you start thinking like a business stakeholder you start thinking like an owner you start thinking like a consultant and your job is to help your business make more money or save more money whatever the end objective of that business is so stop thinking like a problem solver and use the tools you have at your disposal as a data scientist to solve some business problems and draw some useful insights take some new measures which hopefully improve the top line measure the business cares about so this is the phase of pivot now so far as a first step you have taken an inventory of whatever your prior knowledge is second in this phase of pivot you have put that knowledge into practice along with some very targeted learning in what kind of job you want to get and then you get your first job at some non fang company and then you focus on impact flywheel so that you can succeed at that job generally that takes about 3 to 5 years once you are done with this step then the next phase is that of a leap into some bigger companies and for that the very first thing you have to do is that you have to understand the fang interview process generally it is true that getting into fang company is very tough when i got into meta in some of my orientation meetings it was told to us that meta's acceptance rate is 100 times lower than the acceptance rate of harvard which basically means that getting into meta is actually 100 times harder than getting into harvard so of course getting into fang companies is tough but there is one thing about fang companies which i think makes it easier for people who are dedicated to get into fang companies these fang companies have structured interview process so generally if you apply for any non fang company the interview pattern depends on the hiring manager and who is interviewing you and it is very person dependent it is very team dependent and you never know that what kind of questions you would be asked or what the interview loops are going to look like because it varies from company to company team to team person to person and since data science is a very vast field and there are a lot of things to learn there is a good chance that in one round or another you would not perform very well and then you won't be able to get the job but 
or fan comp is a good thing is that since they have centralized hiring process, they also have structured interview pattern, which means that you can tell from the very get go that what kind of rounds you would be expecting or what kind of material you should be consulting to prep for those interview rounds. And that just makes the process of preparing for those interviews much easier as compared to other non-standardized interview loops. For example, at Meta, there are product sense questions and then there are business case studies which you have to go through. Uh, Lead code is sort of a go-to place where you can practice Python or whatever your language of choice is. SQL is also a must if you want to land a job as a data scientist. And then as for the behavioral rounds, you have to know STAR method to explain the situation you have been dealing with and how you dealt with it and what was the impact of it. I'm going to explain the whole process you have to go through to prepare for these interview loops. But the point is that there is this structured interview process, which means that with a structured learning path, you can really improve your odds of cracking these interviews. And once you are able to crack it, and even if you fail at a bunch of tries at one company or another, all you need is just one yes from one company. And that changes the trajectory of your career tremendously because for the rest of your life, you can claim that title that I worked in this company and that company, and that impacts what kind of salary you will command for the rest of your life, what kind of job prospects you can get for the rest of your life. So I think this was a really rewarding journey for me coming from Pakistan, landing the best jobs at some of the best companies in the world. And whatever your starting point is, if you have enough willpower, and if you are willing to put in the required word, I'm pretty sure that using this exact three-phase system, you can also one day land a job at some dream company of yours as a data scientist. I hope you like the content of this video. Thank you so much for watching.